What has South Park been wrong about? Famously they were wrong about Hillary winning the election and had to frantically make a new episode 8 air when Trump won. The Prince of Canada does not dip his arms in pudding when getting married, it's maple syrup. Most famously, climate change, global warming, man bear pig. They used to think it was just Al Gore being alarmist and trying to get attention. Theme, hit started going downhill and they realized they were wrong. So they even made an entire two-parter where they essentially apologized and had man bear pig kill a shitload of people. Tom Cruise never came out of the closet. I, in fact, did not get a low job after watching Book of Mormon with my wife. They put a lot more effort into their writing than most people realize. I remember reading at one point that the Tourette's Foundation, I may have their name wrong, praised them for accurately depicting the disorder and creating publicity, discussion. Paris Hilton's dog did not blow its brains out in the back of a limo. As a redhead, I can tell you that the ginger episode made a lot of kids' school days worse. I could be wrong but I've never seen a Canadian detach their head from their jaw. Respecting Eric Cartman's authority. In Butter's very own episode, Gary Condit and John Benet Ramsey's parents were totally not murderers but super were. But in reality it was deemed very unlikely that they committed the murders. S colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash butter single quote underscore very underscore own underscore episode. In a 2011 interview, South Park creators Trey, Parker and Matt Stone stated that they regretted how Condit and the Ramseys were portrayed in the episode. Climate change, although they did try to backtrack later on. It's Tolkien, not Token. And anyone who thought otherwise is racist. Which genre of music do you loathe? Songs specifically made for TikTok. As a Christian, Christian rock is the cheesiest and most cliched thing ever. Bro country point nine times out of ten when people say they hate the genre they don't actually hate country music. They hate hitty repetitive lyrics over a asterisk hitty drum loop with added snaps on the two and the four. It almost single-handedly destroyed the whole scene, now though thanks to the rise of people like Zach Bryan I think it's finally starting to correct itself. Edit. Anyone interested in what decent country sounds like today I highly recommend Chris Stapleton, Sturgill Simpson, and Tyler Childers. For more of a mainstream, cleaner Nashville sound that doesn't make you want to eat the barrel of a 12-gauge I recommend Luke Combs and Eric Church, both, have consistently put out great stuff. Edit number 2. Almost forgot my personal favorite Jason Isbell, one of the best songwriters alive today. His album, The Nashville Sound, is a no-skip album in my mind. Edit number 3. It hit me I've left some women singers out, and that's entirely my fault so I'll throw a few recommendations out that I personally enjoy. Casey Musgraves, long career as a writer as well, Brandy Carlyle, and personally it hit or miss for me but Lainey Wilson seems to be an up and comer on the scene. I also recommend The High Women a supergroup containing both Brandy Carlyle and Amanda Shires, the wife of Jason Isbell that I recommended before. They did an excellent cover of The Chain, in my opinion. Edit number 4. Everyone in the comments are also posting great artists that I really believe deserve a listen, that I just forgot to include, so I'll post them here so they don't get lost in the shuffle. Coulter Wall, Cody Jinx, Sierra Farrell, Orville Peck, Allison Krauss, Whitey Morgan, Drive By Truckers, Steel Drivers, Old Crow Medicine Show, Jamie Johnson, Country Rap, Hip Hop, Modern Country Music. A lot of these TikTok songs are just so formulaic. Almost to the point where I can practically guarantee they have a family member who works for a label. Can't answer that, because I would be implicitly admitting it's music in the first place. Bad. Bad music I despise. All guns magically disappear from the world today, and can never be recreated. How does society change tomorrow? We are going to get some badass developments in the world of archery. John Wick 5 undergoes a heavy rewrite. Crossbow sales would skyrocket. I imagine archery would see a sharp increase in interest. Relay races would never start. People would miraculously continue to somehow get shot in Chicago. Sales of slingshots take off, companies rush to develop semi-automatic and automatic slingshots with 50-round magazines, and the price of .22 caliber rocks goes through the roof. Kinda depends exactly what does and doesn't count as a gun, Alternative weapons become more popular and George Sprave becomes rich. What instantly ruins a burger for you? Excessive height. 
when the patty slips out the other side. When they cost $20 plus. Poor construction. When it flies out the other end. Stick everything together with a blob of sauce. Wet untoasted bun. If I can't bite it without the entire thing losing structural integrity related, giant patties suck. Multiple thin patty serrate the way to go if you want a meaty burger. People that want to talk while I'm eating a burger. Being too big to fit in your mouth. Pointless. Might as well just throw it all on a plate, and call it, deconstructed burger. What's the best response to, go to hell? Been here since you opened your mouth. Why would I go home with you? I can't go to hell. I'm all out of vacation days. See you there. I'm already there. K. Hell yeah, I am, takes them off guard. Bonus if you do finger guns. I have no interest in your mother nor her bed, sir. Oh yeah? Well, the jerk store called and they are running out of you. Can't, the devil has a restraining order. Where do you think I came from? What do you miss about the COVID lockdowns? No traffic. My life didn't change at all during, Butman was my commute to work better. Silence. Just bird singing. No human noises. The giant parking lot across my condo was always empty because it was for a gym that shut down. I could rollerblade there any time of day and it was completely safe. As a nurse who didn't get to stay home, no traffic and cheap gas. Staying at home without making up excuses. The shutdowns happened one month before my daughter turned one. I got to spend about four months home with her again. It was like maternity leave again, but more fun. I got to see her first steps, which I might have missed if she was still in daycare. It was hard being home 24-7, but I am so happy I got bonus time. With my kid. I actually saved a lot of money. Absolutely loved being able to spend my dogs last year with her. Quality time we wouldn't have had. Not having a cold for two years. I actually saw my friends more since we were video chatting in groups a lot. Personal space was a must. Six feet away from any other person at all times. Great times. Great times. You find a wallet with $300 in it. What do you find in the wallet that makes you keep the money? A piece of paper with, keep the $300, written on it. I once found a wallet with approximately $2,000 when I was a teenager. The money was inside a hidden compartment. I handed over it to the police. Turns out some elderly person got his apartment broken into, and the thief stole his wallet but didn't find the $2,000 so threw it out on the curb. Police called me one hour after and told me they wanted to meet me and thank me. He handed me a $50 that I accepted. It might not seem much, but I was really proud of myself and there's so much gratification in seeing someone really happy. Found a wallet with just shy of $3, oh 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 in it in Walmart parking lot. Had rubber bands keeping it closed. Recognized the guy, was part of the housekeeping contractors at my job. This was on a Friday after work and housekeeping isn't in on the weekends. I was off that next Monday but went up there to take it to him, he doesn't speak any English but he started crying when I handed it to him. Didn't even count it just pulled out $200 and gave it to me. I've gotten two dozen steaming hot fresh tamales at least twice a month for the last three years now. Edit. The goods. My cards and ID making me realize it's my wallet that I've dropped. $300. If there is no way of identifying the owner. The ID of someone who owes me $300. One of those fake bills that are actually little pamphlets with Bible verses on them. A KKK membership card. What is the most important question to ask on AA first date? So glad you're here with me. I actually wanted to present an excellent opportunity to you. Have you ever wanted to be your own boss? Do you have an entrepreneur spirit? Well, I am a part of a very well-respected company that can offer you these things for a small monthly payment of $500. Are you married? Ask about their friends. Who people spend time with and why shows a lot more than anything they'd ever say about themselves directly. Did you ever find Bugs Bunny attractive when he put on a dress and played Girl Bunny? Just have fun. No need to know everything on first date. Parents. What would you do if you found out your son was a rapist or sexual assaulter? A friend, who is also a parent, walked in on her son abusing a very small child. She straight away called the police, as in called minutes after the act. That was 20 years ago, and as far as I know, he's still in jail. 
My grandma used to say that she would call the police on anyone in her family that would do that sort of thing. That was until I told her about what their son did to me when I was a kid. I had to leave my home and I became a pariah to the whole family, receiving nasty messages and everything. People say that they believed the person, especially if it was a child. They say that they'd call the police. It's all talk. The moment that the image in their head of their son, brother, father is threatened, they go into defense mode. It's easier for them to see you as a manipulative liar than Itis to see him as the kind of person who would do something like that. She died thinking that I was a liar and the relationships I have with that whole side of the family, including my own mother, are ruined. Their percussions of me telling the truth about what headed to me is worse than the actual abuse and honestly, I think that's the hardest part. Sorry for being a ick, but I hate that this is the reality for not only myself but so many other people. I will never see justice and I'll never closure. The same goes for many others. My ex-boyfriend raped my friend. I remember talking to his mother about it and how what we thought our reactions would be. Yell, take him to the police, whatever, versus what they were. In reality we both sat in absolute shock and horror, completely confused crying. Neither of us believed it at first either and were in denial because he seemed to be such a good person. He ended up going to prison for three years, paroled for ten and had to register. It's so hard to say what your reaction to this would be. You like to think one you do one thing but most likely you do the opposite. Try to figure out what red flags I missed or what I could have done differently as a parent. Report him to the authorities and make sure justice is served. It's important to hold everyone accountable for their actions, even family members.